Good, night, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the Iowa Great Places designation webinar. The Iowa Great Places program seeks to recognize communities that take action to enhance their local places while staying true to the qualities that make them unique. Designated communities have demonstrated a vision that values their cultural assets while challenging themselves to set realistic goals for advancing their quality of life. My name is John Berg, and I'm the Arts and Community Development Program Manager at the Iowa Arts Council. So before we get started, a few housekeeping items. All lines are currently muted and there will be for the duration of the presentation to reduce background noise, as this is a webinar and being recorded. A link to the recording of the webinar will be emailed to everyone after the presentation. If you have any questions during the webinar, please feel free to use the Q&A feature on your screen. And you may also use this feature if you are experiencing some te technical difficulties. Again, thank you for joining us and I'm looking forward to uh, talking through some of the program aspects and uh, some of the designation requirements. So the purpose of this webinar is to familiarize yourself with the Iowa Arts Council, the division of the Iowa Department of Cultural Affairs, which is the state agency that manages the designation program. Uh, to in introduce you to our Iowa Play Great Places designation process, and to tell you about the goals for this program and how to successfully apply using the online application system. So let's begin with an overview of the Iowa Arts Council. The Iowa Arts Council is your state arts agency. We are a division of the Iowa Department of Cultural Affairs. The department empowers Iowa to build and sustain culturally vibrant communities by connecting Iowans to the people, places, and points of pride that define our state. The department impacts Iowans through the State Historical Society of Iowa, the Iowa Arts Council, and Produce, Produce Iowa, the State Office of Media Production. The Iowa Arts Council is the arts arm of the department, and our mission is to cultivate creativity, participation, and learning in the arts. We administer funding, networking, and learning opportunities that support arts and culture in Iowa, and this includes the Iowa Great Places Program. So let's take a look at the process and timeline for the Great Places designation. Before you apply for an Iowa Arts Council Administer Program, it's important to determine whether the program is the right fit for you. To do so, make sure you have reviewed all the available material for the program. Please note that the Iowa Arts Council's application process is entirely paperless. All program materials are available online and all communications will be sent electronically. So step one, go to the Iowa Arts Council's website, which is noted on the screen. Then click on the Grants tab. Here you will find a list of Iowa Arts Council administered programs. Step two, download the guidelines for the specific program that you wish to apply for. Each Iowa Arts Council administered program has a different set of requirements and guidelines that applicants must follow. Please make sure you closely read and understand these. The guidelines also include a scoring rubric so you can see how an application will be evaluated. Step three, visit the Iowa Arts Council's application portal, which is noted on this screen, iowaartscouncil.slideroom.com. Here you will be able to view a summary of applicant application requirements by clicking on the link to the program that you wish to apply for. To review the full application requirements, you must create an account on Slideroom and log in. After logging in, you will have access to the narrative questions, word limits, and upload requirements. All material must be submitted online via Slideroom. The Iowa Arts Council does not accept any material submitted via email or does not accept late material after a deadline passes. Once you have reviewed all the available material, contact the Iowa Arts Council, and this is especially recommended for first-time applicants, as well as those who haven't applied for the Iowa Arts Council program in a couple of years. Staff is available to answer your questions and make sure that the grant is the right fit and review all review drafts of applications. Make sure you contact staff well in advance of deadlines. This one will, will I give you an idea of what uh, to expect in terms of timeline or turnaround time for the program. The Iowa Great Places redesignation application is due February 24th for those looking to apply for redesignation. The um, 
the new designations applications are due 11.59 p.m. on May 2nd. A remainder of the Iowa Arts Council's application process is entirely online. All material must be submitted using the slide room application portal and material will not be accepted in any other format. Then applications will under, undergo review by the Ar Iowa Arts Council staff for eligibility. Eligible applications will be sent to a competitive review panel uh, by the Iowa Great Places Citizen Advisory Board. For new designations, BCA staff will contact finalist applicants to set up site visits in mid-June. Site visits consist of a visit to the proposed Iowa Great Place by the Iowa Arts Council and the Iowa Department of Cultural Affairs staff, as well as Great Places board members. Designation determinations are typically made based on a combination of information learned in the application and during the site visit. Applicants will be notified by June 30th of designation decisions and applications who are awarded designation will receive uh, an MOU or memorandum of understanding via email and information about their designation. Upon receipt of the designated MOU, places will be designated for 10 years, which at, at which point they will be required to, to reapply for designation in order to maintain their status as an Iowa great place. Designated and redesignated places will have the opportunity to apply for project funding in the fall grant funding round, application round. For more information on grant applications, more information on grant applications will be made available to applicants who receive designation. All designated places are, will be required to complete an annual report for the program at the end of calendar year. Now let's take a look at the Great Places program itself. So created in 2005, the Iowa Great Places program recognizes and partners with communities who cultivate the unique and authentic qualities of their local places, such as neighborhoods, districts, or regions, to make them great places to live, work, and visit. Communities awarded Iowa Great Places designations must have undertaken a public input process to create a vision plan supported by multiple public and private partners that includes a shared community vision that values local cultural assets, goals that challenge the community to advance their quality of life, and strategies to achieve those goals and vision that involve significant public and private partnerships and collaboration and focus on the development of local and regional assets in the areas of arts and culture, architecture, diversity, entrepreneurial incentive or business development, historic fabric, housing options, natural environment, and amenities. Overall, you want to make sure that your designated Great Place application lifts up the local character that is defined by your community. So what are the program benefits? The program provides Iowa Great Places designation to Iowa neighborhoods and districts, communities, and regions and points of fake pride. The designation may be used in signage and marketing material to promote the area. The Iowa Great Places designation remains in effect for 10 years, at which point designated places must submit for redesignation. The benefits of the designation include professional development opportunities, such as the Iowa Creative Places Network, network and networking with other designated great places, mentorship with new or ex experience, ex expanded great places, or experienced great places, sorry. Funding opportunities, and to clarify, the program provides funding for virtual, for, for vertical infrastructure expenses related to cultural projects, such as land acquisition, construction, site management, site development, park or trail design exhibits, Designated communities are eligible to apply for funding in the fall. Each designated place can only receive funding for one project within each 10 year designation period. Talking about the project endorsement pro process, um, designated communities that are also eligible to apply for, for to receive additional consideration for local projects and other state agencies. Those, those programs 
offered by other state agencies over the 10-year designation period uh, can allow for endorsement uh, that will be considered on a quarterly basis through the Iowa Great Places um, Citizen Advisory Board. Those that receive endorsement for local projects by the board are eligible to receive additional consideration such as scoring bumps in programs for other state agencies, tiebreakers, or additional consideration. Agencies such as the Iowa Finance Authority, Iowa Economic Development Administration, and the Department of Transportation can offer those bumps and consideration through a variety of programs. So let's review some of the eligible applicants and ineligible applicants um, for this particular program. Eligible applicants to the program include federally tax exempt 501c3 organizations incorporated and physically located in Iowa. The fiscal location is defined as maintain a current home office or registered and registered agent address in Iowa as defined by the Iowa unit of local, county or federally recognized tribal government physically located in Iowa as well as municipal agencies with 28E agreements physically located in Iowa as well. Ineligible applicants include unit of state or federal government, for-profit com or commercial entity, entities geographically located within a designated, currently designated Iowa Great Place. And in addition to that, the Iowa Department of Cultural Affairs grantees who have an outstanding final report or who have been placed on department on a department funding moratorium. Since this is a comprehensive designation, we encourage regions, cities, and counties to pursue the designation, which then supports projects in prioritized areas like neighborhoods, districts, and smaller communities of the, of the designated Greater Iowa Great Place. Please note that we understand that multiple partners are likely involved in a community visioning process, and we encourage this. However, one of these three types of eligible entities will have to take the responsibility for the application, designation, and any future funding awarded. There can be only one entity that enters into the contract and is responsible for the reporting. So let's go through some examples of designations and a little bit about their stories. First, we'll talk about the Cedar Wapsie Recreational Byway. Designated in 2014 and redesignated in 2019, the Cedar Wapsie Recreational Byway brings together a diverse group of private and public entities. All have different missions, but share the common goal of engaging citizens and visitors to better understand, enjoy, and experience the benefits that comes with shared outdoor physical activities in Lynn County. By recognizing the similarities and passions the partners have in creating the byway, the region is able to capitalize the people who come together from many different backgrounds to take advantage of the 20 parks and sports opportunities offered by the byway, creating new partnerships and, live, uh, and living healthier lives. The Cedar Wapsie Recreational Byway provides foundation for the region to support more livable communities, becoming a tourist test destination and expanding its economic base. Said by partners of the Cedar Wapsie Recreational Byway, the sum is greater than the parts and local partners touted throughout this designation have agreed. Uh, of the program, Sarah Halberg of the Indian Creek Nature Center said, the Iowa Great Places designation continues to, evaluate, to elevate and allow Lynn County Conservation and Indian Creek Nature Center to tell the story of the area and highlight unique, unique recreational opportunities Past grant support has allowed both organizations to grow and build infrastructure, which increases their community presence and supports attendance. State designations and funding support this growth and provide increased credibility to the vision. Um, you're looking at two projects here um, that were just, one of which was just completed, uh, uh, the Wops Wapsikinikon River Scenic Overlook um, on the left hand side of the screen in the bottom right, as well as the amazing space in E Creek Nature Center uh, funded in FY 2014. That those two projects are um, stretched along the Cedar Wapsie Recreational Byway. Next, 
will go to Mason City. Designated in 2006 and redesignated in 2019, Mason City has a strong musical tradition, home to Meredith Wilson, author and composer of the music band. The Mason, Mason City is the original River City. Its musical culture includes the, the annual North Iowa Band Festival, which began in 1936 and includes a parade, music competitions, and entertainment. Over the last 10 years, several successful public and private projects have been completed in downtown Mason City, including a streetscape, central park improvements, installation of a decorative street lighting, erection of wayfinding signage, facade improvements program, nomination listing of the Mason City downtown historic district to the National Register of Historic Places, and the historic rehabilitation of local sites, including the historic Park Inn Hotel and, Nash and City National Bank. Music Man Square features a museum honoring the life and the career of Meredith Wilson, as well as space for the River City Barbershop Chorus. A rich architectural heritage is also found in Mason City. With one of the largest concentrations of Prairie School architecture in one location, Mason City contains the only remaining Frank Lloyd Wright Design Hotel and the, the Rock Glen Rock Crest National Historic District, which is the largest collection of Prairie School homes in a national natural setting in the world. River City Sculptures on Parade offers self-guided tours of over 50 place pieces by local and regional artists throughout the downtown area. And the community boasts the presence of two live performance theaters and annual Iowa Independent Film Festival. Aaron Burnett, city administrator and the Iowa Great Places Citizen Advisory Board member states, the Iowa Great Places designation has helped us secure grants and highlight the projects to larger audience. The public has rallied around the effort to volunteer and volunteer efforts have started to help bring the vision to life. New investments are occurring in close proximity to the project and previously blighted areas, areas are becoming a focal point for the community. Um, they have received several rounds of uh, funding through the Great Places program to not only build out the projects that I mentioned above, um, park in a national bank building, but also one of their um, newer projects involves um, the River City Riverwalk, which is immediately south of the um, redeveloped mall and um, sporting facility. So it's really exciting to see the progress in that community. Next, we'll go to Manning. Designated in 2014, Manning has continued to build upon its cultural assets and history through designations from the House Barn, House Barn Heritage Park to the iconic Iowa sculpture in Trestle Park. Manning prides itself on offering amenities unparalleled in communities its side, size with a population of, of just over 1,400, enriching visitor and resident experiences through a refreshing approach to culture, natural amenities, and recreation. The Manning community co consistently collaborates on projects and has a strong public-private partnership. The city and nonprofits regularly use outside resources to enhance projects. And examples include partnerships with Iowa State University for wayfinding at the Rec Center and Trestle Park Concept, public art, and much more. Another example is a two-year pilot project with Drake University, which has provided direct business assistance as well as public relations campaigns. Both of these universities and their students have helped to create even more plans for tr the Trestle Park space. Of Iowa Great Places, Don Meyer, city manager of Manning, noted, many of the current and past successes have come from the ability to point out to donors and grant funders that these ideas just aren't ideas of the few. They are the ideas that have come from a large community-driven process. So you can see some of the past investments, including the Trestle Park expansion uh, as part of this. Um, recently funded in FY22, uh, they were funded for the Art is Refreshing Sculpture Project, which will continue uh, developing sculptures in and around Trestle Park, as well as similar signage and wayfinding that is unique to Manning. Next, we will travel to Forest City. Designated in 2016, Forest City, with a population of just under 4,000, has a passion for engaging experiences, including concerts, performing arts, and presentations. The community celebrates its long and storied tradition of arts, 
of fine arts through projects like the Bowman Fine Arts Center, the culmination of a community working together and sharing resources to improve the quality of life for its, of its residents. The vision of the Bowman Fine Arts Center completed in 2018 grew out of previous partnerships between the Forest City School District, Waldorf University, the City of Forest City, and the Hanson Foundation, the Hanson Family Foundation. Touted as the bedrock of a strong, artistically enhanced community and beacon for the arts and entertainment in the region, the 29,000 square foot building features a 6,000 square foot plaza, 630 seat theater, and an art gallery, including mezzanine and lobby areas that allow for flexibility for a wide variety of events, from weddings to the Waldorf University Artist Series and hosting of regional and national touring groups. Of the program, representatives from the project said, the Iowa Great Places designation set a tone and direction for a city. The community has undergone a visioning process through Trees Forever and Iowa Living Roadways. This process has given for a city the, a development roadmap that is supported by the community. So those are some just some examples of um, some of the communities their vision process and plans, uh, planning efforts. Um, many of them have been underway for over 10 years. And it's important to, to, to restate that development, planning, visioning, and uh, community engagement take time. That's one of the reasons why we are moving forward with a 10-year designation to allow uh, the partnerships, not only at the local community level, but with our agency to develop and thrive. Um, that way, those the projects identified can, can be those that can be celebrated uh, for years to come. Now, let's take a look at the content of the application as it relates to the scoring rubric. Scoring rubric included in the guidelines for the Iowa Great Places Program is what the panel will use to review your application. You will notice that each of the each section of the rubric corresponds with each section of the application. And other than contact information, we, don't, we do not ask you to provide anything that will not be scored. If you keep your rubric handy while you complete the questions, you will have a better chance of addressing each piece of the criteria that the panel will use. The only unscored sections of the application include the contact information. Primary contact information will ask for the contact information for, for the individual who is submitting the application and who we should contact with any questions. The authorized official information will ask for the contact information for the individual with the legal authority to obligate the applicant should funding be awarded. This is the individual who will be responsible for signing the Memorandum of Understanding or MOU and any future funding contract. Great Places applicant information will ask the contact information for the eligible entity submitting the application. Should, this should be the nonprofit, municipal, local, or county government entity that will enter into the 10-year the MOU and will take responsibility for reporting requirements on behalf of the Great Place. This entity will remain unchanged over the course of the 10-year period and will receive, the, receive and disperse any awarded grant funds. Kind of a, um, a quite a bit of text here, but we'll uh, it will kind of thin out as we go along. So the first section of the application is the applicant profile. Notice as we go through these sections how the rubric aligns with the questions. The applicant profile asks for the mission of the primary applicant and how you fulfill that mission. Provide a description of programming that the entity regularly offers its target audience. Then identify why the entity was selected to be the primary coordinator of Iowa Great Places. You will need to indicate who is on the vision plan board or committee and will be responsible for implementing the objectives and work plan of the vision. Then enter the official name for the area seeking the Iowa Great Places designation. Next, this section covers the community applying for the designation. 
Your response should include both the conceptual response on the culture of the community, as well as the physical boundaries with the map. Provide the information on what makes your community unique within the state. Focus on the artistic and cultural, artistic, cultural, and historical assets. This section will all this section also asks you that you provide a map of the area seeking designation. The map boundary should reflect the area represented in the vision plan. You will enter the population for the area and upload the vision plan here as a PDF. This question and rubric category asks about the visioning process. Strong applications will demonstrate robust community input, including public and private entities through multiple feedback sources and evidence of community buy-in. The vision plan mission statement should reflect the feedback and outcomes of the community visioning process. Be sure to explain explicitly how the community was involved in the process from beginning to end. Sorry, I uh, had an uh, issue with their, my slide there. Um, next, on the vision plan implementation, the vision, vision plan implementation is how the section of the narrative uh, is, how this, is how the section of the narrative. Um, here, we ask you to tell the board how you will implement the vision plan, including a timeline for implementation. Include the details and do not be afraid to itemize this section for clarity. Now we'll go into vision plan partners. Vision plan partners asks for a description of the advisory and logistical partners involved in the implementation. Include roles and resources that they are contributing to achieve the vision. Next is vision plan evaluation. Vision plan evaluation will ask for the evaluative measures and methods you will use to determine the success of your plan's objectives and goals. Include both qualitative and quantitative measures and explain how the evaluation will, will inform the future management of the vision plan. Next is local support material. Finally, we ask for two kinds of support material. Each, the first type of the support material, material is local support. Local support material can include letters of endorsement from civic organizations or officials, local businesses, schools, documentation of public forums, letters of financial commitment, or official resolutions of support approved by the local government. We highly recommend support by the local government and if another entity is applying as the primary applicant. Additionally, the more varied the support, the stronger the score at, uh, as per the rubric. Next is media support material. The second allows you to uh, submit up to five items that provide additional context to the designation. This can be promoted promotional material, renderings, photos, or video of the proposed designated area. The title must identify media support material.
Finally, case for support. The last piece of the criteria in the rubric is uh, case for support. This does not pertain to a specific application section, but rather that to the application as a whole. This is where the panel will evaluate the quality of the overall application and whether the application can, can made, can, whether the application made the case for designation. And for those attending today's call who are seeking redesignation, just a point of clarification. Um, there is a separate scoring rubric below the new designation score, scoring rubric on the same um, guidelines page. Although it's very similar, elements of this rubric for designate, redesignation ask the, application, ask the applicant to demonstrate their, their ability to actively steward the designation, as well as demonstrated progress in visioning activities and project implementation efforts. So the new designation application, it will be a total of 30 points and the redesignation application will be a total of 24 points. So that covers the application in terms of content. Now, there are just a couple of technical terms I would like to point out in, in terms of completing the application online in slide room. As I mentioned earlier, you will have the opportunity to submit application material via slide room, and you will go to iowaartscouncil.slideroom.com to find the application form and to create an account. A couple of items to keep in mind are, uh, Internet Explorer seems to have issues displaying slide room, so use a different web browser, such as Chrome or Firefox. I would recommend that you write your narrative in a separate document like Word to to proof errors before you enter it into the form. Click on the Iowa Great Places designation or redesignation application, depending on whether you're applying for the first time or applying for redesignation. There are two separate, uh, two separate applications in Room, And a link to the guidelines are, are here for reference. Um, you can click begin application to see the full requirements and you will see each applicant application section on the left. Click through them to complete it, and you will see a green check mark when you have entered the, when you have completed each section. We have applicant information, primary contact information, and project information, and applicant profile. You can see the character limits in the bottom right of the text boxes. As you type, they decrease. We encourage you to uh, type all of your narrative in Word or another document first to check for typos and grammar before you enter into the application. Also, keep in mind, these are character limits, not word limits. Next, assurances is where you will confirm that you have read the guidelines and everything you have submitted is true. And finally, the media section is where you will upload your local media support material. The submit tab will let you know what you have left to complete. And once you have completed each section, you can review the full application in the top right corner and submit when you are done. Keep in mind, you do not have to complete the application in one sitting. You can save and exit and uh, at any time and pick up where you left off. That concludes today's presentation. Um, if you have any uh, questions throughout the process, you can contact Arts Council staff. Um, my number and email are here for any additional information. Um, and again, we appreciate you taking the time to review this webinar um, and, uh, and enjoy telling the story of all of our uh, current designated great places and the progress that they've made over the years um, with partners, with community, um, to lift up their local assets. Thank you again for joining us today um, and have a wonderful day.